say something? Good morning. Okay, yeah, I need this to hear you. For some reason, <laughs> that's how my phone is. Okay, I can hear you. Uh oh. Oh, how you doing? Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So, you turn that so your phone speaker is not working. Right. Okay. For a long time. <laughs> Well, good morning, cousin. Uh, good. I go. Good morning. Happy New Year. All of that. I know. I haven't talked to you all year. These are lies. <laughs> I like this hey, point, folks. Hey, Bishop Azor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my brother B. Hi, Bishop. Um, <laughs> looks like it's a lot of people chiming in, but yeah, no, I've had the privilege of talking to you a few times this year. And mm -hmm. I am one of those people who cracks those jokes at the beginning of the year because you only get to use them once a year. And I think it's fun. So. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad you wanted to do this. We were going to come on today to set some goals and talk about um, what we want for our businesses and for ourselves this year. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that okay. our topic today? Yeah, we go on with the flow. So if that's what's on your heart, let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, go. <laughs> you start, please. Let me know. Hmm. Well, all I know is I came in to the new year um, feeling like I'm just looking for affirmation of my ability to receive. Mm -hmm. So um, every time somebody gives me something, I... um. And thankful for that affirmation. So that's what 2022 is for me, is slowing down to receive. Because mm -hmm. I looked at, like, patterns in my life before, mm -hmm. and I was like, there's been so many times when I actually refused a gift because I didn't slow down enough to see that it was a gift. <laughs> You know, something as simple as crossing the toll bridge one time. I didn't have a um, fast track thing on. So um, this is a long time ago mm -hmm. when they, because they're trying to get rid of the attendance now, I think. But I didn't have a fast track thing. Mm -hmm. But I went to the thing, and for some reason, it read a fast track thing in my car. Mm -hmm. And the attendant, she was like, um, oh, you can go, the fast track. And she was like, and I was like, huh? And she was like, the fast track, it, you know, you can go. It, it paid for it or whatever, something like that. You know, she was trying to let me know that it was already, whether I had fast track or not, it was working. Mm -hmm. But I was so kind of zoned out and intent on giving her the $3 <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that I was just like. <laughs> what is this $3? <laughs> I was like, here, take it. That was back when the bridge was $3. I was like, here, take it. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and that's just a small example. Mm -hmm. But how we do little things is how we do big things, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm slowing down because it's all there. Mm -hmm. It's all here for us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slow down so I can receive it. <laughs> what do you think it is that makes it so that you deny those offerings or have denied those offerings in the past? By the way, we are so related. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it some of it was the belief that um I couldn't get something that I didn't deserve gifts. Mm -hmm. I think there's part of that is a belief that um no one would gift me or mm -hmm. I don't deserve gifts or mm -hmm. um or also just having for some reason having that blocked that ID. Okay, so but why would that be blocked? Why would I block receiving gifts? Um, I think, I have to think about it deeper. You asking the hard questions. I got to think about it deeper, but <laughs> what's coming to my mind is an old paradigm where what was given to me um, was given to me with one hand and then taken with the other hand mm. growing up from some very important people in my life. Mm. <laughs> um, also, like, um, 
also sometimes just being so go, 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 go mm -hmm. that I don't have time to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. But the conversation has a gift in it. Mm -hmm. You know, so with that, in that case, I was just so tired and so go, 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 go. And she was saying all this, but I wasn't relaxed enough to have the conversation with her to, to see what it is she's saying to receive. I wasn't relaxed enough to receive. And so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you hit on something with the, uh, you know, the idea of like having something given with one hand and taken away or just trust in general, trust mm -hmm. for my own worth. Cause this, I have, I'm, I'm relating by the way, I'm relating to this, um, though it's a seed I planted and something I've been working on this last year. And I've, I've definitely improved because giving and gifts were often manipulative by some of the people in my life. And so that made it so that I was guarded in a way that was lacking trust. And some of the mantras and the affirmations and the ways, well, first of all, trust is in the root chakra. Mm -hmm. So a lot of like safety, I've been doing a lot of work around I'm safe. Oh, see, I'm going to be all red today. Like I'm going to be all up in my root today around like I'm safe, I'm grounded. Because mm -hmm. you can't take away what belongs to me. Mm -hmm. You can't. And so there is no such thing as actual ability to manipulate. It felt mm. like it. Um, but exploring it and kind of giving affirmations and reframing and exploring those places where somebody was like, here you go, not nah, just kidding, or whatever <laughs> helped build that, that trust issue um, is some of the work that I did this last year. And I'm going to continue that work as well because mm -hmm. it's um yeah it's a friend of mine had said had made a statement too because it the thing about it is if you can't receive you aren't really giving it's like a block of your own abundance mm -hmm. block mm -hmm. and one thing that was pointed out to me by my friend joyce lee is that she was like you are one of those people who has a tendency to have two people standing in front of you. Maybe I said this last time, I'm not sure. And somebody's offering something and somebody needs something. And you're always only going to focus on the person who needs something. You know? mm. And I was like, ooh, yeah. ooh I, don't, yeah. I don't like that. I want to be someone who knows how to toggle between all the things, the places where the gift of giving, because that's a gift, and the gift of receiving. So mm -hmm. I'm with you on that one. Mm. I say, oh, Supreme Blend, say, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see today, I see it's a bunch of people in here today. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> well, maybe we should take a minute to set the tone then and mm. let everybody know what we're doing here. Mm. Um, you want me to do that? or you go first. Please. Okay. Then I'll go. Uh, I'm Amber, or as clearly Clarity. <laughs> You go ahead and say. Oh, that's what, oh, okay. That's what we're doing. Well, I mean, okay. You did I talk about their business or no? Yeah, okay. No, I was going to first just start with what we're doing here. Like, we are oh, here. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. We are here. We are cousins. <laughs> we are cousins. This is my cousin. We are cousins. With life-changing writing. And we uh, discovered, rediscovered each other this last year after long lost, being long lost to each other and discovered that we're both entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. this space is one we're creating to come together and kind of talk about some of our goals, some of our struggles as cousins and entrepreneurs. So yeah. thank you for yeah. joining us. And anything else you want to add? Your business? Oh, my business is Clearly Clarity. Uh, also mm -hmm. Clearly Clarity Collection. Mm -hmm. and Offering. Oh, I offer my services. You can look at my website, which is in my bio. My services, I do coaching, I do consulting, I do workshops, I do public speaking. Um, I also have started the Clearly Clarity Collection, which is a brand of, of body care and home care. So shampoos and candles and things like that. So you can check me out uh, on my page or in my bio. Yes. So I'm Maricia, Life Changing Writing, and I offer two courses through my program. I offer a 
uh, dream course, which is 100% online, where you can uh, learn how to use your dreams to um, lead a more fulfilling life or, yeah, or to more, play around with your dreams by using um, dream journaling and tarot. Um, I also offer a book writing course for writers of every level, experience, and emerging who um, are looking for um, some support in an intimate group uh, coaching setting to uh, write their book so that they can inspire others. And I summarize these gifts, these offerings, and these talents as um, I help people fulfill their writing dreams and fall in love with dreaming. <laughs> oh, oh, if we're doing that, let me give the one that you helped me create. Um, <laughs> let's see. So what do I do? Because I, when we were having an offline, not a, not an Instagram conversation um, with another okay. cousin of ours, I was struggling with how to consolidate all of the things that I'm involved in into a simple description. And Maricia helped me. Uh, what I do, what I do for people is I hold space that others can see their best self in and grow into. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I want to say hi to Iwena. That's my college buddy. Hi, Iwena. Thanks, Iwena. Good to see you here. Mm-hmm. So, um, some stuff now. So, okay, so for the new year, that was what we were talking about, and that's where that came up of the idea of uh, it being difficult to receive, uh, up and then you pointed out such a beautiful point that if you can't, if it's hard to receive, it's actually hard to give. We think we think we're giving, but we're not giving to the full capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and and to that end, I want to say also, it's so ironic. So while I said um, I'm opening to my ability to receive, I also decided I'm not going to go out of my way to be a giver because previously, and that's something that I have to do in order to just create some sort of balance while I'm figuring things out because previously I overgave. (laughs) And it's just like, um, like I have two daughters and one was more laid back and the other one is more assertive. And so one was, they were like two sides of myself. One is, I, I say was because they're both shifting out of that, but one was very much a, if I if you ask me to do it and I can do it, I'll do it just because I can. Mm-hmm. Not because I thought about it, not because I want to, not because it benefits me, but I'm a giver and a people pleaser. One of them was like that. And the other one was like, strong boundaries, right? Strong, but almost too strong sometimes mm-hmm. at times, right? So I actually had to teach them different lessons. Mm-hmm. I had to teach her to be more, just because somebody makes a request of you, it, don't do it just because you can mm-hmm. Really think about if this is a request you want to honor or not. You have a right to have that boundary and say, no, you know what? I am free, but no, I'm not doing that. So I had to really push her for that. And the other one, I had to kind of reel her in and be like, okay, open up a little bit more. And Mm -hmm. it's okay to give a little bit more, to be a little bit more vulnerable, to be a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because when you have kids, one hears you talking to the other one and thinks that whatever the lesson is for that one is also for them, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But it, as you, as we know, um, parents, teachers, anyone who's dealing with multiple young personalities, um, each one is is different. And I find myself now teaching myself those same lessons that I was trying to teach them. Mm-hmm. The two parts of myself, like you're going to receive, and you know what, you're not going to think about giving because actually you're just an innate giver. You always give. Yeah. You know, and I feel that that's true for you as well. The fact that you hold space, that's somebody who is constantly giving you, because you don't turn, it's hard to turn off holding space. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're a giver. Mm-hmm. I'm a giver. I'm constantly listening and listening to down to the heart of the matter. To say, so somebody's going to always get a gift from me. So once I acknowledge that, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I don't have to prove that I'm a giver. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, first, there's a shout out. Hi, Halicu. And I see there's also Royal Music Productions is saying some what's ups to you. So, no, oh. you noticed that. Thank you. But, um, thank you. I think that the thing about the giving 
um because i in the over giving that i was doing that i can reflect upon it now and see where it's the same thing because they're they're the different sides of the same coin so that the over giving i was doing was coming from the same place of lack and scarcity and fear that mm -hmm. the not receiving was that on one hand, mm -hmm. with the not receiving, I was I was afraid of being manipulated. I wasn't seeing my own value, and with the giving, it's like the giving made me valuable, and I still struggle with that. Mm -hmm. the time. But the over giving yeah. and the showing up for everybody else and the yeah. you know lack of boundaries, you know, in in on my mother's side, my my family, we were we kind of were raised with the idea that love is chewing glass, that that's where your worth is is. By, by you know by by being willing to sacrifice yourself for the people you love and the people around you mm. and, um, you know so that's a harder lesson to unlearn for me it oh. isn't in the sense that like my my i slowed down on the giving not because i wanted to actually or because i got that consciousness but because i burnt out when my mm. son got sick, there was nothing left. I had no giving left to do. Right. And that, in a way, was a gift for me because it forced me into learning myself in a more balanced way. But the first thing that came up was shame and guilt mm. because and worthlessness and the idea that I wasn't valuable because I wasn't giving as much of myself and in the same way. And I had created a whole identity around being that person and being that kind of a giver so that mm -hmm. that was a harder one learning to receive i've really been enjoying the process learning to to the boundaries and to say no that one is a lot harder for me because that that can take me into some really dark places that i have mm -hmm. to which is good for me to like parse those out and have conversations with and heal but yeah <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's yucky that's the key word. Yeah. So. so what are, what did you mention already in that your goal for 2022? Okay. No, I wanted to hear you go into yours more because I feel okay. a little, um, a little scattered. Like I know I planted so many seeds in 2021. And so I think my main thing is, is seeing those grow. Mm between um, all the writing and the connections that I've made and the, the book work that I'm doing and family that I've connected with and my business, my clients, the film, the documentary, I'm making the documentary film. Mm -hmm. I, wanna, I want to see those things through and um, grow them. Mm -hmm. And I really, really kind of want to, my main thing is continuing on the healing journey that I just mentioned. I started last year, one where I have created practices that are really, really focused on, um, on undoing some of the patterns that we're talking about, because there's even more. Mm -hmm. There's the giving and receiving is one of them, but there's all kinds of things that I started on. Uh, started to engage with this last year around my mental and spiritual and physical health. And I'd like this year to just deepen those, to get even more um, rich with. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I'm, that's my goal. Those are my goals. Well, um, I want to, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Because I, I support you in that. <laughs> I'm trying to say it in a way like, um, and I'm sending you good vibes for that. No, I yeah. appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> and you do because, um, you know, again, it's like <clears throat> we're having this conversation on Instagram, but we, we talk offline. And so, hi, Mecca. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> um, we talk offline. And so, you know, we, the last week I think or whenever it was yep it was Thursday it was Thursday we had our cousin meeting our cousin meeting was four and a half hours we were on the on the call for or on the zoom for four and a half hours 
<laughs> and it was amazing. And in that, you know, along with like tracing our family line and all the work that we're doing there, we also spent a real good amount of time giving ourselves to each other. And so, you know, a lot of the time when I'm trying to describe all the things that I'm involved in and the way that it can kind of create mania for me, it's like on one hand, I love it. I love that I get to like be so creative, engage things and create things and do things. And then sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, there's too many things. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just, and especially, you know, with what you just brought up a minute ago around being someone who holds space for other people, mm -hmm. which I do naturally. Like I'm saying here, this is my, I, this is my gift and I will make a, it was my business now, but it is also just how I exist. I'm an empath, mm -hmm. which means that human beings are um, to constantly be open and holding myself open enough to be able to hold that kind of space can be really exhausting. Mm -hmm. So there's a place where it's like, there's no rhythmic, there's no, the biological rhythm to that gets a little bit challenging because it means I might be like, I might spend months just like taking on, just like, yes, we're going to do this. I'm holding this space. We're growing. I'm growing and cultivating. That's what a, a lot of it is. And then it might be like weeks of like, I can't take another human, another energy. I need to hear my own self. Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's it hard to hear your own self without practice if, if my the way I am is constantly taking on the feelings and the experiences of everybody else. Yeah. So, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about burnout because um, when you get burnt out as an entrepreneur who's just starting out, so as an entrepreneur who's just starting out, we're doing a lot of things ourselves. We're constantly learning. I get learning burnout and I'm a lifelong learner like you. I love learning but you get burnout out from learning too many new things I want, having to, and having to learn too many things mm -hmm. I want. Mm -hmm. And then there's juggling life with our family. Like you say, you have a son who is sick or gets sick sometimes, and I have adult children who are dealing with illnesses. Um, so it, did, it didn't stop for us when it stopped for our parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our parents, it might have stopped. They might have stopped raising us even before we became adults. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But for us who decided to change that paradigm, and I'm speaking for myself, and you can tell me if this is true for you, who decided to change that paradigm and be a, 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 an available hands-on parent mm -hmm. for my children for the life long, for the life of this process of parenting, mm -hmm. although it takes shift. But that means that if my child becomes sick at 22, I'm I'm there for them. I want them to know that they can call me. I want to be in tune that I can, you know, know. Yeah. And so um, with that said, though, um, even though we give space to our adult children, a lot of people, actually, I'm coming to find out, are dealing with adult children, young adult children who are dealing with a lot of chronic illnesses, whether it's mental or physical. Mm -hmm. So we are actually not alone in that boat either. Mm -hmm. But um, when you have a job and you get burnt out, either you just crawl into work burnt out and just struggle through it, you know, with your coffee and your, your gossip or your computer or whatever it is that makes you trudge through it and get through it, or you call a sick day. And especially if you're in education after three years or tenure, you call your sick days, you're not going to lose your job. Mm -hmm. But when you're your own boss and you're just starting out and you're trying to not only be an entrepreneur and think you're the only entrepreneur in your family, right, that we find out it's three of us. <laughs> But still, when you're starting out doing that and you're also shifting paradigms from how they say, well, they like to say, call it family curses, but I have a, I'm learning of a different, um, different way to conceptualize that. But when you're, but when you are trying to shift paradigms, you know, in your family, huge, mm -hmm. what do we do? What do we do as entrepreneurs when we have in all of that and that burnout and then the money look like it's burning out, the energy burning out. And then <laughs> what do we do? Hmm. <laughs> so, you know, we could talk about that in, in, in present terms. Um, I yeah. feel like the end of the year for me is a time of extremely deep reflection. Like, and I don't, 
I don't, it's just a time where I shut down naturally. And I think biologically, a lot of people do. This is a time where, you know, it's a, it's a hibernating time. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I was grinding hard all year and it was a rough year. And this last few weeks of December, I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. my last pop-up, I think it was, where I sent out a thank you to everybody who put their final orders in, you know, I and creeping closer and closer to the anniversary of my father's passing, mm -hmm. I, I burnt out. I was done. And so I'll tell you what I did, and I will tell you the repercussions of that, is I <laughs> had to shut down. <laughs> These last few weeks, I barely posted. I... I don't even know if I made it like a holiday post Christmas. I haven't done any of my normal Kwanzaa posts. Mm -hmm. I didn't do a new year's post. I have been quietly burrowing and working on my collage. I do a collage every year and just doing a lot of deep reflecting on what this year, hi peacefully me, um, mm -hmm. on what this last year has been, what's been great about it. And not from that place of like making a list of my intentions, but honestly, from a very like somatic and, and emotional place, like I'm feeling it all in my body and I'm feeling it all in my spirit and a lot of sleeping, which is for two reasons. I think one, I'm integrating a lot of lessons that I've collected over the years and also because I struggle with depression. This is a seasonal thing. And so I shut down. What does that mean? <laughs> What that means is on one hand, I'm proud of myself. I love that I love myself and that I trust myself enough to take that time and, you know, give and, and that I do work for myself in a way that allows me to do that. That does mean that I rearranged a few meetings. It does mean that, like I said, I didn't push that last um, little bit of like the new year sales or whatever I could have done. I didn't do any of that. So that's what it means. On one hand, it means that I'm like, look at you loving you. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, it means that I came into the new year with a little bit less money than I would have. And I'm mm -hmm. willing to accept that because again, if I'm working from the place of my own abundance, if, if I'm working on my root chakra, if I'm working on my sense of safety and boundary, I can't not have. So I don't need to look at a dollar amount, that whole like, because what I found myself doing when I first started my own business is that I would take the same model of work that I did in other people's business and apply it to me, meaning that I grind hard and I grind in a way that is like exhausting to me. And that isn't why I moved into my own business. I moved into my own business to find my own groove in my own way of doing this. And so my own way of doing this will be checking in and checking out. And in the checking out. <laughs> I heard that. I'm going to check in and check out. Yeah. I, and I'm going to trust it. It's all fishing. <laughs> and I'm going to trust it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make its way around. I, I Everything I, I I'm going to just affirm this now. Everything that I uh, want, everything I need, everything I deserve is already mine. I have mm -hmm. ext big things coming to me and I know it. And I don't have to sweat. That means that I can take the time and say, I'm not okay today, or I need to rest today. Today is about sleeping. Today is about creativity. Today is about tapping in with me and not doing mm -hmm. all of that over giving um, that I've done in the past. So, mm -hmm. yes. Remember um, growing up, sometimes we would watch TV shows and then the, the, the person would, the store owner would go on break and he put the signs on fishing. Yes. And just the idea that you yes. could just, take a break to go fishing and you could announce it. You didn't have to hide that. <laughs> I don't have to lie and say, I'm going to a dental appointment. I'm really going fishing. <laughs> it's like, it's okay to take care of myself. I'm going fishing. I'll be back when I get back. <laughs> well, and in most parts of the world, they still do siestas in the right. afternoon. They, they're most parts of the world where the human beings are still looked at as humans Rest mm -hmm. and holiday and family are still the priority here in, yeah. in, a, in a land that literally the foundation of the new world, not the indigenous, but the foundation of the new world as capitalism is work, work, work. You're not human. Use your body, use your body, use your body, produce, produce, yeah. produce. And we produce. all, 
-hmm. We all are on this land trying to undo, you know, how unhealthy that lesson is. Yeah. And still produce and still, or but create. I don't want to just produce. I want to create. Uh, yeah. One, um, you reminded me now of a goal I did create. Um, so as you were talking about, you know, you check in, you check out, and, and the question of being, what do we do as entrepreneurs when we get burnt out mm -hmm. and everything depending on us, riding on us? Um, and you talked about how you check in and check out. And I was like, yeah, so integrating self-care, integrating vacation, integrating rest consciously as a structure within our business model. Mm -hmm. um, and I did tell myself that I wanted to have a six-week vacation. Mm -hmm. I'm putting that out there in a way that I've never put it out there before. I've thought of it before because, um, when I used to train to be a, I, I'm a certified Kundalini yoga teacher. And when I was doing the training, I remember um, learning something about um, how it's important for women, especially to get the six week vacation. So that because they are like the spirit leaders of the house. Mm -hmm. And so they need to have that time. Mm -hmm. And so I've always had that in my mind that, Oh, that was the first time that was, it, concept was introduced to me that I deserve it and I should have that. <laughs> so it was always floating there. But this year, I concretely said, I'm now going, this is now going to be a part of my business plan, a part of the, how I'm structuring my business to ideally, I'll be having more than a six week vacation. I'll be having little vacations throughout the year, but I definitely, it's time, especially with the buildup of 2020, 2021, all that. So I'm planting the seed right now with you, mm -hmm. with all these witnesses, <laughs> to have a six-week vacation. All-inclusive, all pay for it. All-inclusive doesn't even have to be in some, like, club net or anything like that. I love being in vacations with the people, um, but it just means I'm not worrying about nothing. <laughs> um, do you know where you want to go? I don't, I have like, um, I see visions of what's there. Mm -hmm. Like I see me on a scooter. I see me by water. I see sand. I see certain things. So I'm um, drawing it based on those elements. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Um, hi, Hydra. One. Hi. <laughs> and also something I had been thinking about is, you know, in our four and a half hour conversation the other day, we were exploring our lineage and how we're related. And we were looking back at the line that draws us and you, myself and Ayana, who will have to get on one of these calls all come from our matriarch was I think she's three three greats of mine and two of yours, I think, uh, Sarah. And Sarah was um, part of the- Sarah Senior, the, you talking about Sarah Senior? Senior? At the cottage plantation in um, the Feliciana Parish in, in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I last year had booked and planned to spend a month out there, both visiting with friends in New Orleans and then going to um, pray on the land where our, my great, great, great. And I think you're a great, great. I think that is what we figured out, but don't quote me, but to go pray on the land and explore the records and see what more I can find of her. Well, I, um, postponed that trip because of Ida and also other things that were happening, but I just had this fantasy about how great it would be if me you and Ayana went together on that journey and mm. um it is going to be a part of the documentary so my film crew is coming that would, that would be a nice and in my mind <laughs> it's like a month trip like I would like to spend a week or two in New Orleans and visit I have a student who is a teacher there now grown as hell mm. made me feel old 
um, whose birthday is coming up actually and who's requested me to come for, for that. So, oh, yeah. um, and spend some time in New Orleans eating. Mm -hmm. Really, that's what I want to do is eat. <laughs> and then drive up and check out um, Baton Rouge and then Feliciana Parish. Yeah. And so just something to put in the hopper that I'm like, that would be really dope if if you two were, there's not a beach I can we can get scooters but that's why I was yeah. like what are you imagining because this I just think it could be awesome don't even worry about those details because I am open to having multiple vacations that's right. That's right. <laughs> so I definitely want to do that with you <laughs> um, that's right okay let's see peaceful and me who I adore mm -hmm. oh my gosh the best crystals and salt baths and we ha we were we were stationed next to each other at the pop-up in Sacramento and I just mm. the setup and the care I have so many beautiful little treats around my home that came oh. from, from her and so oh beautiful I'm glad you're here I'm glad that you're calling people out because for some reason I'm not seeing you oh well he says Self-care is so important, and the ability to acknowledge and set those boundaries is beautiful. Mm. I was just talking Thank to my you. mother about this because I think my love language or love for me is boundaries and expectations. It's, it, it's the clarity. That's where clarity is to me. It's like, I know where I end and you begin. And I know that you know it too. And when I feel like we both know that, then we know how to operate with each other. And well, yeah. that's that's what intimacy is to me. So thanks for yeah. that. Thanks for that. Um, I know I used to um, tell my daughter because um, she would she used to have a hard time making decisions. One of my daughters would have a hard time making decisions, and. Um, like I said, she would go along sometimes with other people. And I was telling her, you think you're being nice by, mm -hmm. you know, acquiescing to other people, but you're not. You're being mean because don't nobody know who you are. You won't let people know who you are by doing that. <laughs> That's not nice. And I, and she came by honestly. I, you know, I, I completely mm -hmm. divulged that, mm -hmm. you know. But I, once I became aware of that, too, I shared that with her. Like, that's not nice. We, we're we taught that that's nice, yeah. but it's not nice. <laughs> you know, where I learned to, to to try to stop doing that was in Al-Anon. Um, because yeah, that's you know this, and, and I think some people do, but, you know, my son's illness is addiction. And mm -hmm. what that meant to parent an addict is a whole journey in itself. And there are books coming, and there are all kinds of things, because I, mm -hmm. I just, it's too hard to just, explain but what I tried to do was and not just with him but there was this way where I was like trying to love him clean mm. or with old lovers trying to love them to stay yeah. you know it just but and what I realized when I in Al-Anon is they have this whole like prayer around detachment and manipulation when I realized mm. that loving in that way without boundaries was me being manipulative, that's what it mm. was. That's what mm. I was like, oh, light bulb. Like, I don't want to, that's not what I want to be. But mm. um, yeah, so manipulation, mm. mean, it's not, it, my authentic self is in my boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And so that we can save this and it doesn't get cut off, we should get off pretty soon. I just want to say, like, part of what makes me feel like 2022 is going to be so great, because I've never been out with the old and with the new old me, new me. I've never been that kind of person. But it happens to be that way this time, where I feel like a big shift is happening. So on Tuesday, I got some bad news. It kind of took me out the box, and I just was, like, comatose, catatonic, whatever, for a day trying to let stuff process through me. Mm -hmm. And it slowly the shift started to present itself. Mm -hmm. We met on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Our um, four cousins it wound up being, the historian elder cousin, mm -hmm. breaking it down for us three to finally understand how we exist together in the orbit of our family. Mm -hmm. 
um, also being able to really make it concrete, like, oh, wow, there's three of us mm -hmm. with this similar vibration mm -hmm. in this family. This is intense. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that was a beautiful experience. Then Friday, I had a lovely intake call with a gentleman about my writing program, but it was a reciprocal feeling of growth and exchange between me and that person. And then um, I also went to the salt bath. Remember I told you I like to go to salt bath? So I did it. I took myself to the salt bath, especially when I'm dealing with some sort of trauma or PTSD. That just really helps get the nervous system back in order. So I hit the salt bath on Friday. And then Saturday morning, we did our cousin Happy New Year's. And then also my one of my best girlfriends and friends was the first call I got on Saturday morning. So I'm, I'm saying these things lined up to make me really feel like, okay, it's shifting to something new, mm -hmm. a new paradigm for me this year. It's wonderful. And then Monday, I well, Sunday, I... um had a little bit of, um, let's say, I guess I could say it on here. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I had something that helped to expand my spirit and mind that I love that Please we talked about before. Please go ahead and share it. Cause we <laughs> it's still assignment. <laughs> I had a civil assignment session and it was beautiful and wonderful. And I, um, I did, um, have you seen, is it called Fantastic Fungi? Fungi? Yeah. So remember when he said that he stopped stuttering yes. when he went on the trip? And he, so I, I, I tried to use that time to break certain cycles for myself during that time. And now I'm talking to you. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. In your session, is it is it a journey you went on on your own or did you participate in a ceremony? Oh, no, it's me at my house, just chilling, laying down, reflecting, processing, first getting through the grief of the the information I had on Tuesday and then um, then choosing to um, break some cycles mm -hmm. and put some pieces back together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because I, I, I have indulged myself and I haven't done it by myself. And I, I think I needed to hear that to give me permission. So, Oh, girl, yes. Yes. <laughs> Or and one of these days, I'm gonna rock with you. We can, yo. Yeah. It's a special. It's a special. It's a special thing. So it is. It's very special, especially when you're doing it with uh, not to abuse, but doing. I don't even think it can be abused, yeah. from my understanding. But no, but but with the heart and intention of using oh. it for healing yourself and healing in the spirit realm. Yeah, that I think should be our next topic. Okay, but show. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, but I think with that, <laughs> I think that there's, I'm, oh, well, let me just say thank you for sharing. And offline, if you need any support around whatever news you got on Tuesday, I'm open and, mm. and I love you. I love you too. And, um, you know, I brought in the new year with a little bit more struggle, but that's okay. Like, I just have been, like I said, resting and isolating and, kind of creating and doing some some of the darker work of the you know and that's okay I'm I'm I've 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 done enough of that to know where I am it doesn't scare me as much anymore I'm, I accept that and so um when and as I work my way through the things that are coming up and when I come out of it if we keep this up or where or just even me and you I look forward to sharing all the gems that I'm pulling but I'm still in it so that's all I got. Yay! Uh, so um, with that, I feel like, is there any last little things you want to say? Mm -mm. That was my last little bit that I'm can... just receiving and affirming <laughs> and yep. enjoying this shit. Go ahead. So, oh, I was going to say that we can end it so that we can try to figure out how to save it since we didn't save the last one. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so I love you, cousin. Mm -hmm. Bye. I love you. Bye.